guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. I'm delighted to welcome our guest today, Carolyn, and like I was explaining earlier, I'm always in search of the top 0.1% in terms of mindset, execution, people that are impacting the world, conglomerating it, fostering organic conversations, and delivering it to the audience. We have a audience of diverse backgrounds. And with Carolyn, she's going to talk to us all about, she's a master certified life and leadership coach. And so we're going to talk about work-life balance, how to quit the hustle, controlling your environment, being in control of your destiny. So Carolyn, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, I I really love Podmatch, which is a matching service because I normally wouldn't be able to connect with experts and leaders such as yourself, and I'm happy to have you. Tell the audience your origin story, how you got started, and what you do. Thank you, Christopher. So my origin story is that I was born and raised in Iran until I was 11 years old and have that sort of uh, cultural background that informs my work even uh, today, you know, in terms of diversity of thinking and culture and so on. Fast forward, as far as professionally at 16, I opened the first uh, Johnny Versace store in in the United States. So (laughs) I know it's a different industry, but most people know the designer. You know, in 1982 is when I really built my the first business that I built from scratch. And I had that for 17 years. And then after that continued in the same industry, luxury, fashion, and um, worked for Hermes, Yves Saint Laurent, Bulgari, and finally Gucci. And that was three decades in an industry where I thought I was selling items But really what I was selling was connection, a sense of, you know, learning um, that people really what they they pay for at the end of the day is a sense of being taken care of, of being seen, of being heard. I took that into my second career, which again, I built from scratch, which is to be a life and leadership coach. Today, that's much more known. It's almost too known in that everybody seems to call themselves a coach. A decade ago, I was getting the question of like, what do you do? What's a coach? And um, I will say that one of the things that drew me to wanting to have this conversation with you is because I do work with a number of physicians that want to transition into creating a second uh, career for themselves. And are not sure how to do that. They feel very boxed in by, you know, their title and what they've been doing. And I help them see that really what they have been doing is much bigger than, than, you know, even what they think and what they've been told they do and how to create a prosperous business again in the second half of their Mm. lives. And that's what I do. Mm, I love that. I really, um, I think the best way to get a business experience is working for these high-end brands. They know all about the, um, what I love about it is that they're selling identity and feeling, and that's why they're so prosperous and then translating it into leadership and um, that fantastic story. And so we'll talk about, you know, especially this idea of um, you, you come up with this, uh, there's this uh, very, really good book about amateur versus pro and going pro. So you came up with this distinction very clear early on and a very clear driver of your work. So 
connect this dot between where you started and where you're now. So I have to give a credit to Stephen Pressfield for his book. Um, I think it's called Turning Pro, which I which I read ages ago. And through the years, it's really nurtured this distinction that I work on with my clients of what it means to really turn pro in life. What it because so many of us, we live like amateurs our entire life and then wonder, look back and wonder what happened. And really, life is about living skillfully. A good life is about living skillfully. So many of us think it's about our character and our personality. And yes, character can be cultivated. Personality is a made up thing. What matters is how you do what you do. And when we turn pro, whether it's in our relationships, in our communication, in our leadership professionally, in our ability to create prosperity, there is a way that professionals do it that's very different than how amateurs do it. And that's what I'm talking about, that distinction. Yeah, really, really interesting. And, um, you know, I didn't really turn pro until, you know, 38, you know, I've considered myself a amateur before that. And, um, you know, it's, it's just fascinating where you, um, and I love that book, Stephen Pressfield, where it's really like, be the very best at what you do. Um, like as you call it, um, living skillfully. And one thing is talking about is um, this uh, idea of you call it the game of life. I know it's cliche, but describe to us your philosophy in this game of life you know, amateur versus pro distinction. Yeah, thank you. So, so many people um, have a negative reaction to the word game, like, oh, I don't play games. And I love games because <laughs> games are fun. And if you can, instead of shaming yourself, sort of like game yourself, you know, it's so much more fun. And games allow us a framework to work within and to have fun within and to, um, expand ourselves and push the boundaries. So that's why I see life as a game, not because I see it as a small thing or unimportant thing, but because a game has rules, so does life. A game has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Actually, so does life. And it behooves us to realize that because so many of us live as though there's no end to life. As no, mm. we're not in actually the middle where, you know, the first half is gone, you know, and you, you said that you, you turned pro at 38. I turned pro, honestly, in my early forties. And, <laughs> and when you realize, oh, okay, so there are rules. This is a game and like basketball and football and soccer, there are rules. What are the rules? When you learn what those rules are, what those principles are, then you can turn pro. Then you can practice and you can train and you don't take it so personally. That's why yeah. I call it the game of life. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, we're talking about this, uh, this idea, especially in this day and age, everything is seems so chaotic and we're having all these like poly crises. What are four life principles for the audience? They're in this rat race, you know, always striving, you know, how do they, how do they quit this hustle? How do they get out of it? I'll give you the main one. If I was ever going to get a tattoo, I, this is what the tattoo would say on my arm. So I could see it all the time. I put it right here. Slow down to speed up, slow mm. down to speed up. So regardless of their age, all my clients are high achieving. They are ambitious. And I'm not just talking money. I'm talking about wanting to really live on the edge, push the boundaries, see what they are capable of in every area of their lives. Ironically, in order to do that, we need to slow down to the pace of the present moment. So as I'm sitting here with you, 20 minutes ago, before you and I got on, I was doing something completely different. Right now, in this moment, nothing and no one exists but you, Christopher, and engaging with you and bringing everything that I have to this moment. Ironically, that's later down the word, I will succeed. Because in this moment, I was completely slowed down. But I'm not saying slow down to sit on the couch and watch Netflix all the time and, 
you know, like in bonbons. I'm saying slow down so you can see the opportunity that is in front of you in this moment. So that's, for example, rule, literally rule. Yeah. Yeah, really, that reminds me because um, uh, I was talking to another guest and she was saying the same thing. She's like, if you're anxious, you're living in the future. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. And this present moment is only what we have. And um, what's interesting is, you know, as, you know, we go through life, you know, people come and go, you know, some of them go earlier, some of, and then it's really interesting how, how um, this idea is like, all we have is, you know, this present moment we have today, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So if you wake up tomorrow, you're lucky, you know, and then, which is really hits to the core of what you were saying. But you and see, then, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. What I'm saying is not new. Like you can open um, Instagram any minute of any day and see something to this effect or read a million books. The power of coaching, the power of coaching one-on-one -on -one especially, but in groups as well, is you could teach people how to do that. We don't get lost in the what to do. We get lost in the how to do it. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that we need to be present. But how do you do it? That's the power of coaching. And yeah, I you love know, that. You as a physician, you as a doctor, many doctors don't do that. You yeah. know that. And the ones that are doing well and creating more prosperity for themselves are the ones that have made that shift to holding this sort of exquisite space for their patients whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes. And those are the ones that are excelling in your field. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And, and, you know, at its core, physicians are healers, but they're also influencers. They have, you know, a lot of trust, you know, the public trust and something not to be taken lightly, you know, as I age and I understand more of these, there's a lot of implications for decisions made by doctors, their actions, how they present themselves. You talk about coaching, which you do. And, um, you know, like I said, what's interesting is not only did you, but a lot of physicians are calling themselves coaches as well, um, which is very interesting. And, um, but, uh, you know, some people are like, I, I don't need coaching. I can, I'm my therapist. But, uh, you know, what's the difference between coaching and, and therapy? There's so many different kinds of therapy now and so many different kinds of coaches. And I want you to keep that in mind. But to give you a, fairly simple answer. Therapy looks at the past. Why did this happen? How did I become who I am today? Coaching looks to the future. We go to the past to only to inform our steps towards who you want to become. So therapy really is so important because so many of us are just, we don't know why we do what we do. And therapy is incredibly helpful with that. And it's really important to understand how you got here. But how you got here is not going to get you there. And that's what a coach can help you do. I have a particular cringy reaction to people who put slash coach, real estate agent slash coach, stylist slash coach, doctor slash coach. I think that they do a disservice to their actual day job and career when they do that. It confuses people and it diminishes both of those um, professions, the profession of being a doctor and the profession of being a coach or rather being a professional coach. All leaders, if they're good leaders, are coaching. So all great doctors are great coaches. All fantastic parents are great coaches, but that's coaching as a verb. To be a professional coach is a thing of its own that needs to be respected and acknowledged. And it is my, I mean, I put it to you that two decades from now, everybody will have a coach like they have a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, or a trainer. And it wouldn't be such a, like a thing of like, oh, you know, you have a coach? It's not going to carry this charge to it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And um, you know, even uh, what what I think what I find interesting is um, studying the uh, top people in the world. You know, top athletes. You know, even 
Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, all of these still have coaches. They have coaches in different areas, fitness, diet, training, strength, everything. So, um, you know, if the top people are having coaches, you know, uh, imagine how um, working with the coach can supercharge there. So you have some ways that you can supercharge people's productivity results using your coaching methods. So describe that. There are lots of ways, um, but we always have to start from a person's values. Listen, you know, at the end of the day, okay, yes, there are assessments and so on and so forth, but basically a really great coach, what does she or he do? I talk to people and their life changes. That's actually what happens. Conversation is our tool. So in conversation that is slowed down to the present moment, to the person in front of me, we understand what your highest top life values are. Because when you don't know your values, you're driving in the dark. Your values are driving your actions, whether you realize it or not. It's, it's like gravity. You don't, you know, you don't know how it works, but it still has an impact on you. So what we want to know is what don't we know? What don't we know about what inspires us? And what has us taking action? What are the what's what are the top values? So for me, for example, freedom is a very high value. I can go to a coach and say, hey, you know, help me. My goal is to find a life partner. Great. If I don't know that freedom is my highest value and there is a limiting belief there for me that, oh, being with someone is going to take away my freedom, then there is no stepping towards that goal. So we start with what is holding you back and usually what is holding us back. And again, I'm not talking dysfunctional people. We're talking the Michael Jordans of this world. And I consider most of us in our own way, Michael Jordans. Okay. So what is usually holding us back is somewhere inside our values, our subconscious, things that are, you know, beliefs that are limiting us. So we go deep in there and we unearth those beliefs. What is limiting you? What do you not, what values are you not living into? And working with those and shining a light on them. And then once the client has an insight, oh my God, wow, you're right. I do think that if I am with someone, it's going to curb my freedom we can go into, well, is that true? Is that true? Is there anyone around you who has their freedom and also a life partner? And systematically, we move forward until we get to small action. What is the first small step you can take in that direction? I love that. You know, as of any question, how would you suggest anyone who's interested go about finding the right coach for them? And, you know, if you're, if it's the right fit, how can they contact you, follow you, uh, reach out to you? Okay. Thank you. So following me is easy. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I'm on Facebook, Carol and Mabubi coach. I'm on LinkedIn where a lot of my clients actually, uh, that's, that's my number one platform is LinkedIn. The best way to stay in touch and to learn, because everything I've shared, I put out in blogs on a weekly basis, is to go on my website, uh, Carolyn, to sign up for my journal. And, you know, I don't spam you, but once a week you get something from me that is very personal and it's all about uh, self-coaching, helping people to self-coach. As far as clients, what I advise is always get an experience of coaching. Don't just go for someone who whose price fits in your budget. You know, the best way is through referrals. Find someone who has worked with someone you know, and you've seen the change. You've seen the transformation in your friend. And that way you can get a referral to a coach. And then even then, once you connect with them, have an experience of coaching, have a conversation, maybe two, maybe three, that really allows you to understand whether it's a fit with the right coach, you should feel a shift literally from one session. 
Your life is not going to change in one session, but you should have insights from one session. You should have some, you know, aha moments that you feel the energy shifting inside you and you feel like, oh, wow, I actually went into my life after that session and, um, and did something differently than I had in the past. Yeah. So wonderful. And I love this. Um, I really love this idea. Individuals bringing their philosophies, their life experience, really making an impact. So let's thank Carolyn for coming onto the podcast. A really very fascinating, enlightening discussion around the topic of coaching. All of Carolyn's resources will be in the links and show notes. And be sure to uh, check out her website if you to find out more about her. So thanks so much. And thanks for coming onto the show. Thank you, Christopher. you are listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week